So in today's blog post, we're going to wrap up the modeling of this Cybertruck. And for those that don't want to watch the, the modeling process, uh, skip ahead to the very last video in this series and have a look at what I've got planned for this uh, special version of the Cybertruck. So anyways, for those that want to watch this modeling process, uh, let's hop straight into it. So the first thing we're going to do is a solid extrude. Uh, we could get rid of this box around the outside. We don't really need it, but then again, it's not in the way at this point. So I'm just going to leave it there. So let's hop straight into our extrude. And I want to grab the profile, the outer profile of our truck. So since there's a, a branch point here, I have to guide it a little bit here to make sure it follows the correct path. So that gets it all the way around. Just green check mark to accept it. And mine has already come into the completed settings. So let's me just uh, jump back to the default settings. So this is how your operation probably looks when you first start this solid extrude. Now what I want to do here is I want to extrude in both directions here. So this guy here I want to uh, check mark. And the reason I want to do that is that's going to keep my geometry here in the middle of, uh, of my model, which for, for this project I want to do. Um, so when I'm defining the distance to do this extrude, I need to keep in mind that it's not only moving one inch in this direction, but it's also moving one inch in this direction. So if I want an overall thickness on this part of two and a half inches, I need to set my distance to half of that. So half of two and a half is obviously inch and a quarter. So that's going to set up our two and a half inch width for this truck. Screen check. Now before we get much further, I want to separate my solid from my wireframe geometry as far as levels are concerned. So what I'm going to do here is make a new level. Double click the number, I'm going to change this number to 20. Double click the name and I'm going to rename this level solid. Okay, so the reason why I went with number 20 is I want to be able to use all these load numbered levels for different uh, wireframe sets, which will come later in the video. And then 20 is spaced far enough away that as far as sorting levels go, I can keep my solids well away from my wireframe geometry. Keep in mind, these numbers can always be changed later and it won't affect anything. Okay, so solid, let's get that solid model now onto the solid level. We'll need to select it, right click in the graphics, from our level select button over here, change levels. We're gonna do a move, and we can either select it by number here or just checkbox use active since 20 is the active level. Just make sure you're set to a move, hit okay, and notice the entity count did change. I now have one entity on the solid level, and that is the solid model. Okay, so let's keep moving along here. Next up, I wanna do the side uh, window cuts, profiles. Uh, so a couple things to point out here. Um, maybe let's just, no, let's talk about that in one second. Let's do the easy stuff first, and then we'll get into that, uh, that next. Okay, so with this wireframe creation I'm about to do, I want to make sure that it ends up back on my wireframe level, which is level one. So moving the checkbox back over there. So anything that I create now will end up on the active level. I'm going to create some wireframe, and I'm going to create that side... Um, edge, I guess we'll call it, from the very front to the very back. And I'm going to hit the blue check there because I'm going to create another line, but I'm going to create it slightly different. And next I'm going to create the edge of the roof at the top here. Now for this, I'm going to change my line type from two endpoints to midpoint. I'm going to click on the very midpoint of this edge, which is right there. So you now see now when I start to stretch out in one direction, it stretches out equally in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to click anywhere along this edge. See, I'm getting the, the visual cue there for, um, I guess that would be vertical. or No, that's probably horizontal, sorry. And I can place it anywhere. Let's go right there. And I can still modify this line because it's not locked in yet. I can edit its length over here. And as far as the length I want to go with, I want the overall length of this line to be inch and a half. So I'm going to type in 1.50. So keep in mind now this length dimension works opposite the way that that solid extrude did. Uh, that solid extrude extruded equally the same in both directions. This length is in fact the overall length of the line from here over to here. It's the total length. Uh, but anyways, that's the size of the line I want. Green check and we're good. 
Let me just do a clear colors here to get all my geometry back to one color. You notice the geometry is, is tough to see. It's that dark blue and it's, it's tough to get any contrast between this gray uh, solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of that wireframe geometry. I'm just gonna select it all with my quick mask. Right click. And from the pull down for wireframe color, I'm gonna go with something really bright uh, green. Now that will change the color of any existing geometry. Any new pieces of geometry, I would also like to have this green color. So over on the home page, I'm going to change my wireframe geometry to green. So all new wireframe geometry will be created in this green color. So onto these, these cuts, what I want to do is basically from the front, I want to take a line that comes down here like this and slice it all the way down the length of the truck. So your first thought is, okay, let's just draw some wireframe from, uh, from there to there. Let's switch this back to two endpoints. There to there, and there to there. And extrude that through. So the problem with that is that will not extrude down the length of the car. Whenever you're doing extrudes, uh, the solid extrude, this guy here, the geometry that you select has to be planar, so it has to be in one plane. And the plane that that geometry creates, the extrude will happen normal to that plane. So this geometry here, if you do an extrude, uh, no matter the plane that you select, you can select top, left, right, uh, whatever custom plane you want, but it's going to extrude normal to the planer, um, normal to the plane that's been created by this wireframe geometry. So in this case, it would be either straight down this way or, or straight up. So it won't, in fact, travel along the part uh, that we want to. So we need to address that somehow. So what we're going to do with that, um, so if our geometry is creating the plane of the extrude, we have to create the geometry on the correct plane, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do next is make that plane uh, for the geometry creation. So I'm going to click over here so I can do a dynamic plane creation. And I'm going to anchor this to the back end of this, this line here. And I'm going to tip my Z to go along this line. So I'm going to grab this guy right there, this arc. That allows me to rotate the Z and making sure that we're outside of this graduated dial. I can snap on the end there. So now this plane that I've got is going to be normal to the direction of the cut that I want to make. So let's give this some sort of relevant name. We'll call this uh, side cut plane. We'll have this set to the WCS T plane and C plane after creation. The origin does not matter for this plane. We won't be using it later on for any tool pathing, so this is fine as is. Green check. Okay, so notice that plane is active. We can go into our planes field and see the side cut plane is active. Now I'm going to make some geometry. Uh, let's get rid of that guy. And I want to make geometry that comes from the top here down to the bottom. So if I just start creating geometry, then the same thing's going to happen as before. Uh, I'm just making geometry that's not in the correct plane. So that's that's no good. So let's get rid of that. So what we need to do is create plane, or sorry, create geometry in the 2D plane, which will respect the plane that we just made. So now when I do a line endpoint from the top here, notice the anchor point to the bottom here. Again, notice the anchor point. Now we get this line over there. And that's what I'm after, because this is going to create planar geometry that will extrude along the plane we just created. Now, basically, I just need to close this shape off. Uh, now, what I find will happen is if you create the geometry exact along these edges, you can come into some problems with the extrude. So what I try to do just to avoid any problems is have my geometry that's going to be doing these cuts be just slightly bigger than the shape that I'm after. And this usually solves all problems that you would typically have with something like this. Let's just divide away those. Okay, so let's look at this from a top view again. So notice my boundary is now, it's slightly outside of this, all of the stuff that I want to cut. So now I can go ahead and hop into that extrude. Grab this whole shape. Hit OK. Uh, we're going to switch this over now to a cut operation, cut body. And I want to check this guy over here through all to make sure I go all the way through my part. This both directions guy doesn't, won't have an effect, but it's maybe best to turn it off. 
keeping in mind we need to get the direction of it then the correct way. So with both directions turned off, you might need to flip your arrow to make sure it's going through the part. Okay, so that's good. Green check, done. Same thing for the other side. This plane that we created will still work over here. It hasn't been skewed left and right. It's only been tipped up and down. So let's go ahead and hop straight into our wireframe creation for this side. Now I need to switch over to a 3D to get this line in. And switch back to the 2D to get this line in. Okay, and let's go ahead and extend those again. Let's close that geometry off. Now it's easy to close this geometry off. Just look for that visual cue that says that you are in fact making a straight line. There it is there. And then trim away those excess. You can use divide like I used previous or obviously you can use the trim too and select the insides. Uh, the result is the same. Now with this extrude, I can do a, a, a completely new one or we can hop back, hop back over to our solids, come into this extrude cut and just come over here and add another chain, add that chain in. Okay, and the result is the same. The solid will go dirty since we edited the extrude, just rebuild it and we're good. 